Alright, howdy, Beefalo Bart here, Ed, and welcome. This is what I was talking about uh, a few days back, was uh, something I was going to call Feature Friday. Where, take a feature from a game and try and replicate it. So we'll take a look at a few of the different features here. Um, today's game is going to be The Division, as you may or not be able to tell. And if you're not familiar with the game, Division is set in New York City. Really nice looking game. Not done on Unreal Engine, but we're going to try to put together some stuff based off of that. As you can see, when you get it close to a barricade, and this is one of the, one, one of the things that I wanted to look at, was when you get close to a barricade, you can see that there's um, an icon that shows up on the barricade. And we'll actually snap to it, hit the space bar, your character moves over to it, and then takes cover behind it. You can then... You're locked to that position, more or less, and you can aim over the top, or you can actually get back up, or you can hit control key and go back over the top of it. There's also Seeker Mines. One of my favorite things. Now there is a global event going on, which is going to add a few more things going on. But um, I like the secondary explosions. There was part of um, the global event going on. So one of the features I wanted to look at was either, and I kind of leave this up to everybody right now, but the idea of taking cover behind something, as you can see, when you get close enough to the object, whether it's a car, doesn't matter what it is, so to me it's not an object, it's actually something that you would be able to approach and do. So like this, I can come over to it and take cover behind here, that side, that side, and as you can see, each spot that I can actually go to is going to be separate. <sighs> How does it work? You see there's a gap in between which is going to separate and probably do this with a box collision where you would set up a box collision in a blueprint and you know you could apply a, a material which to me could just be first off an image with um, uh, pretty high transparency level so it just is putting that image right there on the area closest to where you're looking and you notice that there's an arrow on the ground in front of my feet and then there's also one on the wall the more important one to think about is the one that's on the ground so essentially you could do this with two planes one on the, the ground one on the uh, the wall section and apply uh, a transparent material to it. So it could be done with just um, a blueprint and a box collision, a couple planes, and get the cosmetic portion of it. Then when you hit the space bar, uh, essentially what you're doing is you're moving your character to that location. When you get to that location, you're then you get within a certain point, you're going to go to the crouch animation right next to it. Now, is this something you could do really, really quickly? Mm, no, but it's one thing at a time. Now, as you can see also, I've got that little line that goes on the ground. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little white line that's on the ground going towards the next one that I'm aiming at. Hold down the spacebar key, and it will travel from one to the next. So I can move from cover to cover to cover. And it even draws a little path to it. A lot of complicated elements going on there. Um, there's pathfinding. Um, yeah. So may or may not do that feature. Um, kind of like to, but wow, it's going to take a little while to, to get that one accomplished. Um, it's weird as that. Uh, this layout of the stream, I cannot see the chat. 
So, another item that I would like to take a look at is a deployable turret. I can deploy this turret out and automatically look for targets. You have to ignore those secondary explosions. That's part of their global event going on. See, it does a pretty fair amount of damage. It's even pulsing the um, the enemy targets. And what I mean by pulsing is it's actually allowing them to be visible through the wall. Uh, pulse is an item that um, will actually show you the location of threats. In this case, even through a wall. So it's like a wall hack. And there goes the Seeker Mine. The other item there, when looting, the, um, the light shaft that goes from the ground to the sky, a nice little particle effect. To let you know that there is loot there, so you can go over and pick it up. See if I can get some loot from these guys over here. So, kind of need to look through and pick out which um, feature we want to do here. And of course, no loot from these idiots. The XP that pops up. Nice little pop up bar there. The XP bar on the upper right hand corner. Now, since my character is already max level and cannot gain any more levels, something else as well. You see, there is a booby trap right there. Get within a certain proximity from it. Nice little thing is the closer you get to it, The timer, uh, or the beep, gets faster, then th this one explodes into a fireball. Really nice effect. So, a lot of cool things to take a look at here. Vaulting over. Um, and this game does not have a jump. It, you just can't jump. Hitting the spacebar does nothing. If you double tap it, it'll actually do a, a roll. So, if you don't want a jump feature in your game, and I actually, th I'm mixed on it. I like being able to jump over something. So, you know, that's, being able to jump from place to place to place is good. But, by removing jump completely, it kind of takes away one of the elements of being able to exploit in different ways. People being able to sit there and do bunny hop jumps and drop to the prone position and dolphin diving and things like that could be eliminated by getting rid of jump. So to get over an object, as I get close to an item, I get this, but as I'm close to it right here, you can see the control um, CTRL and a little arrow that pulses for me to go over, hold a control key and I can vault over it. The thing to start off with, Vault is what I'm going to take a look at. So I approach an object and I want to be able to get over the object by vaulting over it. And I can hold down the control key as I'm getting close to the object, so I don't have to wait until I'm there. Oh, let's start sprint mode. Um, I don't have to wait. I mean, I could be in a full sprint holding down control and I can just keep right on going. So, two stage wise, first off, getting the notification saying that we can hit the control key and vault over something. I don't know about holding the control key as I'm going. Uh, we'll take a look at that as well. So, I think this is the one we're going to start off with. It should be relatively simple. It's essentially going to be a jumping over an object. But we're going to remove jump from normal use of the character so we can't just run around and jump over jump in midair. 
So that removes one aspect of Unreal Engine 4 from the default engine. The way it's set up for the default character is just being able to jump from object to object. You know, that's fine. But we want to be able to vault over an object instead of just generalized jumping. Alright, let me get changed scene-wise here, and we'll hop into Unreal Engine 4 and see what we can do with that. Really like this game, by the way. Pardon the late start for the stream, but... I have been sick, so... Ugh getting over infection and dealing with a cold. So, give me a, just a minute to get switched over here, and... Oh no, we have two new inventory items. I like this inventory interface, too. I could mark items that I don't want to keep that might be junk items, and then I could actually deconstruct it. Yeah, there's a lot of cool shit about this game that I like. But, let's take a look at Vault first. Alright, so, quick game. All right, let's get this game closed up. Scene should be switched over, and again, don't know why I can't see my my chat. I'm gonna see if I can pause the stream and start back up again without killing everything. All right, so. All right. Should be able to keep right on rolling here. Hopefully, I didn't kill everything completely. You guys see me okay? Gotta peek online real quick, make sure that everything is still working correctly. Damn it. I don't know where it comes up with their, their ideas for suggestions, but god damn YouTube is so broken. Where it comes up with their, their ideas for all right, well, that's working. Okay, so, um, we're going to continue on here. I am using 4.20.3. Mm, yeah, I, I wish I did create that, but, um, uh, uh, Unreal Engine 4, they didn't use UE4 for their game. They're using, I think it's called Frost Drop. All right, this is for users of the SMST 420. Um, the I've shown how to use this a thousand times, but I'm going to use a clone of it to do what we're doing here. So I'm going to right-click on it, select clone. We're going to call this division. Going to hit browse and select folder and create and continue um. so it's going to take a couple seconds to actually get that created and then after I've done that once you've got this you go into it the first time and you never go back in it again so there's a division I am going to go to my Unreal projects, go into the project and delete the saved folder, and you're good. Then you can go into it for the first time. So yeah, and I like the Division, I like a lot of things about it, and with the Division 2 coming out soon, um, about two months. There's actually some features that I like that are going to be in there that I think could be a lot of fun. Um, uh, one of the NPCs in Division 2 
has a uh, an attack system and what they're they're doing is essentially these are criminals that are using improvised weapons and one of the improvised weapons that they have is looks kind of like a, a garden sprayer that's on, on the guy's back and he essentially you're getting hit with this foam attack essentially what happens is it it gathers at your feet and it just expands rapidly and now your feet are encased in this foam that rapidly sets and you, you, you you're stuck in place so if you're trying to move from cover to cover and all of a sudden you get hit with a foam attack you're stuck in place and there's nothing you can do until you know you you shoot it or somebody else shoots it to, to chip it away for you so yeah it can be a pain in the ass all right so we have this I'm actually going to go ahead and create a new level. Typical VR basic. Play with my balls, my cubes, a pyramid, and just get rid of that stuff. And this is just typical for for me creating a um, a test map. This is going to get everything I need for a test map. An arena that I can't fall out of accidentally and eh, good enough create a folder call it map shit and grab everything and throw it in there all right so go ahead and save all save selected maps folder and test map and make sure we set it up for a third person game mode alright so our player what are we going to need to get started off with well first off we're going to need a, a barricade we already have the ability to jump so we're going to get rid of that so our player will no longer be able to jump that is per the division you can't just randomly jump around so we're gonna get rid of that but we need a barricade so let's go ahead and create a barricade and I'm just gonna create a rather simple one let's go with uh, pardon my damn sniffles I, it's ridiculous alright we're gonna change the details on this we're only gonna make it 100 high And I'm not worried about it being on the ground right now. I'm going to change it about, I don't know, four or five thousand times. And the X, we're only going to do this. Well, we'll we'll do this at 100 for now, also. And let's go ahead and make it. No, I didn't mean to do 600, 300 wide. And since I'm being a Dorcas, go to my assets folder, materials, and screw it, we're gonna use that color. So X of 100, 300 Y, and Z 100. You know, I could sit here and make a really cool barricade, but I'm not gonna. So let's just make it X in 50 set our location and that's our our barricade the barricade just needs to be an object it doesn't need to be anything in particular because what we're going to do is going to be based in the blueprint itself and purpose got it set up here on the, the zero so we have a dividing line right here on the map that will go right through it so we can actually put one on this side this side this side and this side you'll see once I get the uh, the blueprint created so in my assets folder I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called gadgets and in the gadgets folder we're going to go ahead and start off with a 
blueprint. We're going to call this BP underscore vault location. And essentially what we need here is for Unreal Engine to fuck itself. Editor preferences. God damn it, why can't you get smart enough to retain that? Jesus Christ. So, anyway, where I was trying to go with that was, all right, you guys can go to help too. Let's go to my viewport, add a component of, well, we can do the visual representation of, and I'm going to grab a plane, and I'm not going to resize it just yet. I want to take a look at it in the map. And then the color. It's got a material on it. So let's go ahead and create another material for it. We've got a white material here. And if you look in it, it's pretty much nothing special. It's just a texture and yeah. So we're going to actually take that and duplicate it um, no idea how I'm going to set it up so let's go inside of it and look at it um, color actually let's break that I am no master at materials, so laugh now while you're watching me do this shit. Um, because what I'm looking for, and I can never remember the name of the damn thing. Things I don't do enough with materials to um, to get away with doing this. And materials. It's using no. I'll look at this one. It's body color. It's just a parameter. <laughs> so, yeah. Be the one thing that actually slows me down. I'm trying to figure out how to do this shit. So she can copy and paste, and I'm gonna dump that. Get the color, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it as. all white but I'm going to put the alpha at point 0.8 let's actually try to point 0.9 Alright, so we'll take a look at it here, um, just to see what it looks like. Save, and close you. And let's replace that with material test. I'll screw up the material again here in a little bit. Um, and actually no. we'll stick it at 0.5 and we'll leave it at that for now I'm not going to get carried away with the material again um, 
I really suck at doing these. So we got that and control C, control V. No, you asshole. I said control C and control V. Thank you. So we're just making intersection right there. It is not complete yet. For sure. And of course it's not in the right direction here. Now, because of the nature of this floor, it appears like, well, it is actually going through the floor a little bit. And that's just because of this floor type. To keep that from being a thing, you can manually move it, is what I would suggest for here. And a chain snapping to five. So if you look at it now, you can see we have it. There is no collision on it, which is fine. We don't, well, there is collision on it, sorry. Um, let's grab this, control C, control V. So we'll put these on both sides. They don't do anything just yet. And the material sucks. So now we have them. We know that we can see them. This is the location where we can now vault over. And yeah. So we need to put a box, uh, box collision in to create our own volume for it. So let's go ahead and add a component of box collision. And we're going to change it and scale to 1.5. and that should fill up that entire area. There we go. Compile and save. And we can see that it fills it there, but when we go into play, we don't see that actual box. We just see this. And we still have jumps. We haven't gone into the player and done anything with the player just yet. But this marks our location that we can put as an actor anywhere where we want the player to be able to vault over an object. So that's going to get us that portion of it. So let's take a look at our character. And first off, um, jumping, input action jump. We are going to have to kill that. We're not going to be able to jump. So now we go into the game, pressing the space bar no longer jumps. So now we are not able to, to jump up and down and act like complete morons, which I enjoy being a moron, but you know. All right, so now we need to be able to get over this barricade. How are we gonna get over this barricade now that we've disabled jumping? Well, it would just be easier just to leave jump in the damn game and jump over it? Well, yeah, but if we're trying to recreate something from another game, and a lot of games don't actually have jump now because, well, they just don't. So, how are we going to get over these barricades? First off, when we go into this area right here, it, we need for it to allow us to be able to vault over an object. So, that just tells me we need a variable can vault question mark so we now have a variable that says can we vault so we'll take this and we'll go with our box right click add event on component begin overlap 
and on component end overlap. We want both of them because whenever we overlap into it, we want to be able to tell our player that you can, uh, which we'll do right here, set can vault. And before I put a check in that box, I'm just going to control C and control V. And there we go. So by going into and overlapping with this box collision, we can vault. And when we leave it, we're setting can vault to false. Technically, that's all we need is that. So now when we come over here and we're inside the box, we're going to be able to vault. But what if we're not at a correct angle? We want to align our player. There's a lot of things we need to take a look at. So for the giggles, I'm going to add in a an arrow. Now you can see which direction the arrow is facing. A couple ways to go about this. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab my two planes. and actually fix them because I want that arrow to stay default. God damn you suck. I mean you, you obviously saw that I was clicking on the correct arrow to move it and it decided it wanted to go in a completely different direction. Alright so that arrow component. We're going to be able to see it here, but we won't be able to see it in the game. Now that's going to screw all of what I've already got, but that's fine. Because up until now, it didn't matter because it was just a visual representation. About time you showed up. All right, so there, we've got our visual representation. Yeah. Well, this some of this will apply to what you're trying to do. So now, since we don't have the ability to jump anymore, we now have this box right here is going to say as soon as we're in it, we can vault, and then as soon as we leave out of that, can vault is false. Yeah, I actually overslept a little bit. I was going to do this at 8 o'clock, and it started at 10 o'clock, so I didn't get anything to eat. Yeah, I know. Sleeping during the middle of the friggin' daytime. You do that when you're old and crap like I am. I mean, and sick like I am. Alright, so that's that. We're, we're all set. We can... Yeah, we can't jump over here, but we can vault. So... How do we know it's working? Well, I know it's working. But, you know, since you guys don't ever, you know, want to agree with anything I ever say, you think I'm shit, which most of the time I am, I'm going to add another component on here. And just for shits and grins, I'm going to add in a uh, point light. Just as a visual representation. Well, you, you want me to, to stop the entire stream and just wait for you, or? <laughs> All right, so I throw a red light on there. So we see there's light. There is light. But what we're going to do here is, with this point light, we're going to turn off visible. Okay, we added it and then just made it invisible. So what I wanted to do with it was, I'm going to get reference to my point light. I'm going to shove it right here in the middle, and we're going to get rid of this. This is just a visual representation. We're going to set visibility. I'm trying not to sneeze here.
you know that point when you know you're about to sneeze and it's like, oh god, it's building up, it's building up, it's building up, and I don't want to sneeze on the stream, and then it's just going to throw my friggin' um, headset off and everything else. So essentially now, just as a visual, visual representation, we just, we get a little bit of light, so we know that we're we're there, we know it's working. Because you guys doubted me and, you know, you want to see that there was something here. You could also set it to where those two planes are not visible. You don't need them at all, but um, that was something that I was going to put in for something else. But um, you don't even need them. But we just wanted a visual representation to know that we are in the right location to be able to do something. So that's all we're doing with, with all that. Because, um, I mean, with this right here, you can get rid of the light and these two planes you can uncheck visible in game so they'll show up in the editor but whenever you hit play they're not going to be there so you could do it that way if you want to so pretty much done with the vault location for right now it's just just what it is it's something that we can see we know that this is the area where we want to be able to vault over so in our player and the division, it was the control key. So uh, let's try that. Keyboard left control. No, I'm not going to cover creating custom key bindings yet, but maybe sometime if you guys convince me of it. So when we press it, we want to, first off, get a branch node and ask can we vault and from here if the answer is yes then we need to be able to jump this is where it can get really simple or really really complicated no Technically speaking, uh, a vault, vaulting over something, vault is typically a really big ass freaking box or a room where you hide shit, but to vault over something like pole vault, uh, to vault over essentially means that you're at an obstacle and you're wanting to vault over it. So typically like your left arm would go up and then you would hop over and throwing your legs over the top or you would jump over it and then okay so let's take a look at what we had for our jump jump and stop jumping so let's grab these guys we're gonna do it the simple way first um, But see, that was on key press. Um, I don't like that. This is not going to be... Oh, please, let's stop the live stream because my neighbor is too fucking stupid to know that his car has a fucking car alarm. And that he needs to disengage the car alarm before he opens the fucking door to his car. Bravo, fucking moron. You only do this five or six times a day. Fucking idiot. Anyway. So, um... Yes, I apologize for the uh, thing here. But now we can get over the top of it. But we can't preemptively, like in the division, I could hold down the control key, and as I approached an object, um, it automatically just did what it had to do. So that'll take some looking into as well but for right now whenever I'm in this location I can now vault over it 
Um, and here's the thing is, this is set up for Vault. The other idea was using the same system for being able to, uh, and let's go ahead and go into that gadget. The viewport. We got rid of the one off the back there. Being able to come over to right here and crouch. The other thing is also you could, while you're standing up, you would take cover. So there's a lot of things that happen with this, these volumes here. But I cannot use the, the jump key, it does not work. And holding control doesn't allow me to do it. I don't like this fucking control key. Um, I'm going to go right here and change it to keyboard spacebar. I did cover it. Yeah, like, what, a week or two ago? So yeah, the the system now allows me to vault over, but it, what if I'm facing the right, the wrong direction? So let's try to force our character in that direction. All right, so how can we do that? Which I just close this, close this up. Skateboard system was just attaching the skateboard to the the skeleton and as a socket and then making it invisible and then calling it whenever I needed it. All right, so we have our arrow component. It's going to allow us to get a direction. So let's actually go into our player character and add another variable in here and vault direction. And we're going to change that to a rotator. Yeah, rotator. Um, So what we need to do is, before we're able to jump, we're going to force our character to look in that direction. So let's go inside here again. Please. Are you done now? Are you done now? Fucking hell. Get a reference to my arrow component. And I want to get world rotation. And then drag off from our as player base and I want to set vault direction connect it in here and connect that to here and we want to set our now base rotation um, Set world rotation. No, I want to set actor rotation. Set actor rotation. Because if you just set the mesh, it'll turn your freaking mesh. Absolutely stupid. Alright, so let's see what happens here. Um, run over to it. All right, so it, it faced me in the correct direction. So if I come in here from the side and I go to jump, you can see it turned my character to the correct direction. 
we just need it to jump over. So, how the hell do we get it to do that? We need to, you know, like this, come over here, hit the spacebar, it turns them in the correct direction, but the jump just, well, jumps, and it jumps them in the air. How do we tell it to jump to this location? And there was much rejoicing, so I think jump is actually not going to do what we need. So we're done with that again. So we're good up to here. Jump is probably not going to be it. We're still going to use that animation, but uh, what do we do here? Pass or fail, you guys are supposed to be helping me out with this shit. What would you do? You're not going to teleport. You're not going to just magically appear. And... Let's unhook that for just a minute here. Um... Yeah. Gravity's gonna stop us from jumping. We don't need that on there. Um, yeah, I mean but what if our forward vector is still this way? We want to set our location to here. If we're already in a jump animation, it should in theory um do that. Just chuck this guy over here. I don't need it at all. Just get rid of it. Um, so, simple move to location. Goal is. Um, let's get our actor location. Because we're there, and we want to um, yeah, we're gonna have to use math and shit. Damn it! I don't like thinking. Thinking sucks. It makes my brain hurt. Um, probably are gonna have to. Uh, damn it. Um. We got a direction, and we need, yeah, we're going to have to probably use, um, get forward vector. And... Let's try a vector times float. And let's do it at 250. That'll be our goal. And get the player controller. And let's just freaking shot in the dark. I don't know if this shit's going to work or not. Nope. Not a bit. So, we don't have a forward vector. Because if we're standing still and we want to vault over it, we don't really have a forward vector. I'm 
facing the correct direction. It, it's putting me in the right direction. It should have, in theory. Um, it's jumping. And in theory, okay, I mean, I can increase this value. Um, see, I've already got forward vector. So what if I just did that? Because I'm forcing myself to that direction. Essentially, I just want you to do that. That's all I want you to do, you son of a bitch, is that. When I'm sitting here, I press the, the key to jump. I want it to move me there. Yeah, 700 is a long ways. See, it's still not able to, to get me over the barricade. I jump, it's not moving me forward. So, uh, let's try something different. Jump is going to happen. We're, we're going to jump. We're going to, we're doing that movement when we get there. And setting our actor rotation is getting us in the right direction automatically. So when we hit the key, it sets our rotation. It jumps. It needs to move us forward in the, the correct vector. See, I'm, I'm facing this way. I'm moving left and right, not forward and backward. If I'm already looking this direction, it's one thing. But if I'm over here and I'm looking this direction, whenever I hit the space bar, it faces me in the correct direction. I just need it to propel me forward, to move me forward. Um, in theory, I would say probably an animation, because if you think of in the division, when I was showing it, you walk over to the item, and now essentially you could envision that I'm putting my left arm up onto the um, the barricade, and then I'm just kind of throwing my body over and then landing back onto the ground again. The animation covers that distance, moving the root, but then again, you have to remove your own collisions because you're going to be flying all over the damn place. Um, you apply force, okay, but applying force to the forward vector. Um, okay, get forward vector, but you don't have a, you're not really um, moving because your, your forward vector is being pulled off your vault direction. So, if you just look at move, axis events move forward and right. Um, that's not going to be what I'm working towards here. Um, and, and I'm following what you're saying. Is, is moving on ground, is swimming, is crouching, is falling. Um, And let's see here. Move component to. <laughs> Character movement. Add impulse. Um, add force. All right, so that's what you're you're saying is add force. 
no, that's right there. That's a um, jumping function. That's that's hard coded function of Unreal Engine 4 is jumping. Force. Um, but you see, the force is going to be X, Y, or Z. This is going to be this. And get the forward vector and run it that way. But, okay. Let's see. I'm not setting a force amount. It's, so it's not going to continue carrying over. It's not saying add force of X because um, there's nothing here. I'm just taking my thing and we have to do this is make vector we actually have to add something to that because we're not we don't have a plus or minus to that so if we get our forward vector and then essentially we're gonna have to have a plus or or float tone float because yeah, it's all it's reading zero as our forward vector but if I, I'm doing this then it's applying that in which direction do I want how do I know which one that I want because I'm trying to get the direction from my forward vector and I'm wanting to uh, break that and if I just do a vector plus vector or um, that's actually float times float I'll just put a hundred in there and put that and because I don't know what the hell I want I'm gonna put it on all three axes So something that could have been simple, just being able to jump over it and leaving jump on the player is now become a, um, a complicated thing. See, if I'm at a complete standstill here, I'm still jumping. So what's the point of that? Let's get jump out of the equation. Well, it's jump. Jump is one thing, and applying a thing. See, it faces me in the correct direction. And, I mean, I could put it at, at, at a thousand. So, come over here, and whenever I hit the space bar, He's still anchored firmly to the ground. I took jump out of the equation. So adding force to that, I mean, even if I broke that and got my vault direction and unplugged that, I'm still going to be facing the correct direction, but adding force did nothing. It was worth a shot, but taking this in well launch character is kind of a cheaty way of doing it and if you come back in here and just said launch character what is that oh if you launch your character um, but still you're at the same thing here uh, how do you know which direction on your X and Y to, to launch 
and how much Z. Launch character is a great thing. I love that. It's a fun tool. So I'm going to break my rotator and we'll do like I did before. Make the vector for that. And Z is just going to be straight up and down. We need to go up and we need to go in the direction that our um, our arrow, arrow is putting it. Yeah, I mean, that'll be a good number. Um, and that's just the X. And that's just you know, the Z, rather. That's just going to push us up in the air. It's not going to get us going forward. So we need our, our vault direction. We need that rotator. So just going up in the air, I mean, I could, I could break this and just add in Z of 250 or whatever and that's just going to launch me straight up in the air. It's not going to launch me over the barricade. Get there and it's going to throw me up. Actually it's not high enough so You can see my forward vector is pushing me in the direction. I might as well have just kept jumping intact. Because it's not vaulting me over this way. And see, that's no more than just a, a casual jump. And it's not even—it's not even keeping me forced into that rotation. I want it to essentially, if I hit that key, I want it to put me over, and I want to be standing right here, facing in this direction. And you can see, I'm—I'm I'm in the the box. The light is on. Why can't I do anything? I can't fault. I can't—I can't jump. I have to leave it and get back into it again, and then I can do it again. And now it's working fine, but if I walk over to this one, it's not. So, yeah, the launch character has its benefits, also has its downfalls. But if you're going to do that, you might as well have just left jump in the equation. And with this this setup right here. I mean, vault direction. I mean, if you break your rotator, I want to get these values. Because vault direction is just the arrow. That's just going to be the direction of which the arrow is facing. Okay? We don't have a forward vector because we're standing still. So we can't enhance that we already did that we set our rotation right there we just needed to set our rotation it's like I said come over here and I'm facing this direction right here when I hit the key it sets me in the right direction see I'll leave this I come over here at this angle then I'll take my hands off of the mouse which you know I don't have a camera on but as soon as I hit the spacebar, it faces me in the correct direction, and then it 
jumps. So, I mean, if I take all this stuff out, no matter what, my character is going to face the correct direction whenever I get over here. So, it doesn't matter if I'm facing this way, as soon as I hit that space bar, it snaps my character to, to the correct rotation, and now I want it to catapult me over the thing. I know that the, the correct way of doing this, but there's just no shortcut on it. There, there, the easiest method would probably be to uh, create a special animation and a spline mesh, and essentially you're forcing your player to follow a spline mesh. And that spline mesh would go from here it would go in an arc above and come back down to here. So your 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 root of your player would have to follow a root. And that would be the correct way of doing this. Nobody suggested it, but I just wanted to point that out that there is a, a correct way of doing this. There is no shortcut. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is, um, running the spline is the only way you're going to be able to get this to work correctly. Um, because whatever you use a spline, it's forcing that. So this object right here, our vault location, needs to have a spline added to it. And our character needs to find that. Let me get rid of that light. just because it are not necessary. So we got our vault direction, that's all set up. Um, so we can set our character in the right direction. So you add a component of a spline. Oh, I'm scrolling down because I'm too lazy to pick up my left arm and actually type. We add a cable actor in, that would be cool. Spline. All right, so absolutely terrible. Why are you sending me a Discord message while I'm in the middle of a damn stream? Boy, kick you in your nuts. I don't want to look at my message. I'm, I'm, I'm streaming. I want to, I want to cheat help. That's what I'm saying. This is whenever I'm doing these things, I'm calling you guys to, to throw suggestions out there and put this in. So spine itself. Oh, I, I, I appreciate that, but I'm just saying this is the way that you would have to go about doing this: is creating this spline mesh. And um, I don't, I don't want any extra things. Just, just follow along and 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 play along with with the happiness. But yes, this would be the solution: is is creating the spline mesh. Um, I have no patience to deal with spline meshes. Um, but you would create the arc for your spline mesh, and um. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm I'm not worried about it. This was actually um part of this this whole thing was for for somebody else. This wasn't really the function that I was gonna do. I was gonna do the, the take cover. And that was to lock your character in, in position on cover was the uh, the feature I was gonna do tonight. Um but half of what I was describing for all this is um was for that person. Well, yeah, this spline actor mesh would be the correct way of going about this. And in the spirit of 
the one that I was going to do, which was the, the get on cover. Um, whatever I hit to get on cover for right now, we'll just modify what I'm, I'm doing on this one. Yeah. I actually, um, I covered four, whenever I'm doing a lot of these videos and, and streams like this, they're actually for one or two particular people, and I will cover what I need to cover for them to get them fixed in the right direction, and then just screw off from there. I know, it's a terrible way of doing things. So at this point right here, essentially what I would do is... So I'm not going to keep this um, project. Once I get done with this stream here, very soon I'm going to delete the project. Go back to doing what I was doing. And let me grab an animation really quickly. Animations. Melee. No. Oh no, I was starting to get organized with that folder and I just haven't finished yet. Uh, let's see. Not in that one. Animation. Um, there's thriller animations. I don't know if you guys have checked. Um, uh, my. Google Drive has gotten quite full, so the only thing that I have not, I got rid of everything from there, except for my Assemble Multiplayer and some of the Try Before You Buy stuff, uh, City Studios uh, stuff. I'm going to be moving all the Try Before You Buy stuff off of there and going back to um, putting everything on uh, itch.io, not bitch, but itch. Um, it's not retarded animations. Where the hell is that animation folder again? I keep moving shit around and trying to get organized, and then I disorganize myself. Yeah, I'm getting everything off of my Google Drive account. So if you're you're trying to need the links from the BBG demos uh, section, and it's not working, let me know which one it is. Um, I'll go through and I'll, I'll purge that section, but um, honestly, I, I wanted to get a lot of stuff out of my Google Drive account because here before too long, what I'm probably going to end up doing is archiving only the projects and things that I need to archive on my using my Google Drive account for my my personal Google Drive stuff or my stuff I need to save, and I'm probably going to nuke all of my hard drives and start from scratch. I need to put that other hard drive in. Um, I've got a one terabyte hard drive that I bought almost a year ago and has been sitting on top of my computer in a um, hard drive docking station um, for almost a year. I also have a freaking car stereo amplifier I bought a year ago. That motherfucker's still been sitting on there. A little cheap Sony amplifier like 500 watt amp, something like that. But it's a Walmart special. Hell, I paid ten dollars for the damn thing. It's been sitting on my shelf for a year. I haven't done anything with it. Well, shit. I was looking for an animation. The time it's taken me to to run my mouth and actually look for this animation, I could have installed the animation starter pack which it's one animation from there that I'm looking for. And the, it's probably in the other folder. Right there. Um, I just want a, any other crouching one. Crouch idle. Skeleton, UA4 mannequin, import. There, good enough. So 
So what I want to do here, just really quickly, is whenever I come over here, instead of doing the vault right now, we're going to get on cover. So what I want to do with this is I want to get my character to face that direction and do the animation. And I'm going to create an animation montage. Okay, that's done. Save all. Then what I want to do here is go into my animation blueprint and in the animograph, the root here where you got your default so that you can use a animation montage smoothly just type in default put in a slot default and knock that over to there and that so now whenever you're doing this um, we we'll set a rotation and get ready to jump. We're going to play animation montage, which is well only one there. So play rate, target self. Which one of those two do I want to use? Do I want to use that one or there we go? So now we're crouching. We leave. It's kind of slow to get his ass back up. Turning off as much UI as you, UI help. Yeah. A little slow to get back up there. Whenever I walk away from it, um, what I probably need to do is add a manual in here. So get in here, hit space. You can't just, you know, this is just a, a on cover. So let's actually I guess from right here faults because when we leave that, it's going to set that to defaults. So let's um uh, I'm doing one thing and thinking about another thing here. So um I don't know why I do that. See, I'm I'm thinking about one one particular process of what I'm doing here. Okay, yes, he's he's in that. Um, but he got back up on his own. I don't want you to get back up on your own. I want you to stay looping in this animation until I leave that box. Uh, let's actually because I'm using this one you do play montage um, I don't really like using that one Play rate is the speed at which you can do it. Um, but you know, also you can do play animation, and typically this isn't something I would normally do. You know what? Screw you. I'll just pull you from there. And actually, just do the animation and set it as looping. You know, doing the montage is probably a better way of doing it because you will transition in and out of it on on your own.
So you see he's forced into it. You see he's not coming back out of it whenever he... So the montage itself... And released. Now, if can vault is equal to false, it's, then this is not going to fall in here under that. So that's the downfall of doing the play animation. But if you're doing the montage, it's going to do that. Now, see with the uh, the branch here. So what's going on is is from pressed. When we press it, when we release the key, that's fine. But what's going on here is the animation montage is not looping, and also with the um, thing here, um, when we leave it, we're turning this off. So we're setting this variable to true, and then we're setting it to false here. And that's fine. And what we tried to do here is we select the actor rotation, we start playing the animation montage. This actually is not even being used. So if we look at it, we walk over here to the obstacle, and it did not do the animation. Oh, because it probably need to tell it to actually do one <laughs> as soon as I did it I was like oh shit so okay come in here at this angle hit the key faces the correct direction he goes into the uh, the montage but the montage does not loop forever we want it to loop forever and then when we decide to start moving we want it to stop So, how about a flip-flop? So we're still asking, in this case right here, can we vault? But for right here, whenever we hit it again we want to come out of that so the fact that we're going into the animation montage here I'll go back and add it into the animation uh, blueprint to add that animation in then let's go ahead and get a reference to our mesh and Set animation instance class and third, a third person animation blueprint. So we're just going to force it back into this whenever we hit the uh, space bar again. I probably need to do something else with that, but. Um, shit, spell that wrong. Montage. Stop animation montage. So I come over here and we start it, and then we stop it. We start it, and then we stop it. We start it, and then we stop it. So, just need to make sure that um, that montage is set to loop. Get our blend in, blend out, blend out trigger time, sync group.
rate scale. All right, refresh my memory. How the hell do we set? See, so yeah, I'm all about UI shit. So even coffee is not helping my brain tonight. Yeah, I can't even focus on the goddamn screen. Eyes are getting blurred back and forth. That's what I love about being sick. I can't remember how to freaking make an animation montage loop. Well, that's cool. I need to actually be working on my project instead of screwing around with this stuff because none of this actually is, is going into my project. So <laughs> this is one of those things where this was all done for demonstration for other other people here. How do I set this to be... Yeah, I'm getting ready to end this stream here. It's, it's We're past the hour mark. I had some issues with other stuff in here too, but... Um, I just can't remember the switch on here to create a loop, to make this actually a loop. Um, I thought there was a... Something you, you selected in there that would cause it to loop, and it's not doing it here. It's like with playing the animation, it's actually going to loop. So, and this is going to play the, the montage, and it's going to stop the montage. This is going to do that perfectly, but I want this to actually be a looping montage. And play rate is just going to affect the speed of which it actually is performing that. I mean, shit, you can always just do that, but it doesn't like going to there. Both are the same node. So, Close non for government work. Okay, so this this was the um, the the cover. It just totally fucking shit the bed. All right. Well, not responding. It absolutely shit the bed. So we're going to leave it at that. Pass or fail? Well, yep, we know how we can make it work um, for both both parts. Um, for the vaulting, uh, using a spline actor to set to go over the barricade is going to get you there. Um, and as per normal. Delete. So, yeah, I'm going to cover one thing really quickly and um, I'm take a quick break. And when I come back, well, yeah, we were covering this and one of the other, other parts of the series earlier this week. But um, I do need someone to um, do a quick test with me to verify a few things. Um, and I will cover this project here and another stream here shortly. Something totally different. Um, 
in fact, well, I mean, I could do it this way too, but uh, I'll go in here to play. And I don't want to do this in that on one player. Now we'll, we'll do that just for shits and grins. All right, so, and it doesn't like this way. So let me actually go into the map and show you what I'm talking about. And this uh, I'll cover in another video. So, client here. And a server here. Not 100% of a thing that you have to worry about. So, the point of this, this right here, these are active video screens. I'm just going to go ahead and, and when you go to room one, this will be a combat mode area where while you're inside this, you're able to be in combat mode. Um, server, this particular one right now, I'm looking. And yeah, I can see that um, he's there, he's there. Three different camera views. These are arena cameras that are showing in that different area. That camera right there, I can't access because I am not in play in standalone mode. But as you can see, if you can see right there, he's right there in front of the door. Oh shit, ran into the damn door. Let's go back into the lobby. But if I go into room one, that's a combat area. And your character changes your mesh. And like, oh shit, we're in combat. We go back to the lobby or one of the other rooms. You go back into a non-combat mode. Um, what I need to test is go to the main menu map. It doesn't like it when you do this. So if you go into single player of this, as it stands, yeah, I mean, this is basically my, my simple multiplayer Steam template with a few other things added in here. So this is the server here. So I'm just going to... It does not like you doing this. So just I'm going to get an error whenever I stop playing. You can see I'm here by myself. The other one's still on the menu. But since I am the server, I am now the host. So I have access to a admin menu. So let's actually bring in a client. Somebody else decides he wants to join the game. I'm gonna find hmm, I don't see anything. Let's click on find lobby and see if we can find a game to join. And hmm. Hey look. A ping is sixty two. I'm gonna join that game. But I see that you know this guy is yellow. I haven't fixed the um thing to, to be a hundred percent here, but um so we see everybody being yellow. I'll fix that portion of it later. It doesn't matter. The clients won't notice anything different. But now, whenever I go into my admin window, what I'm going to have is a, a list of players in here. And as the admin, I... You can still see that camera. That camera that's right there... I'm actually able to view in the um, another camera. I can see what the um, the other player sees. So this is the admin view screen, we'll say. So if you're in your office, you're looking around, you can set it up to where, okay, look. Now, I'm looking at my, my own camera right here right now. But as you can see, number amount of players is two. And then I'll have a list of the name of the players here, and you'll be able to select it and view. And you'll be able to view that player. So you can see, I can see what that, that other player is. So it was the server here. Let's try to set it up to where it's on that side. If you watch, that camera is showing a view from the camera that's on that player. Even though they're yellow, but still 
and they come over here and ha ah, I'm going to jump into the combat arena. So you, you're seeing a camera that is anchored to that camera. So the admins, um, whoever the admin is, will be able to have direct access and see what the other players are doing. So, yeah, I'll cover all this shit in the next video. I'm going to take about a 5 or 10 minute break, get everything to reset, I'll set up a new stream, and I'll start talking about this project. Um, I'm purposely not putting any other assets in here, so as I'm getting everything structured, if anybody wants to buy this one when it's completed, this will be a whole different ball game. But this is based off of my simple multiplayer team template, which everybody knows that the it, it runs it. This shit just works. So right now, I just put the ladder in there just for the hell of it. But if you go to room one right now, that is the combat room, and this will be there will be combat allowed. You're teleporting within the map, so it's not like you're you're actually going to another map. Uh, we'll set up level streaming and. Instead of it being side by side like this, these could be miles away, set up level streaming and shit like that, so you'll be able to observe. But with the admin, you'll be able to, to have this, maybe make this window larger if you want to, and be able to see. Currently, right now, I, I'm, I'm viewing my own, but I was right in the middle of, of testing a few other things. Just wanted to make sure that um, only the the host has access to playing up that menu but as you can see that camera right there on this wall is actually showing the view uh, from a special camera put on that player I get it all hammered out and all the little details hammered out this was just something I was testing earlier and we just was talking to somebody else about render targets of how you can add them into your map so you can have visuals right there. Well, there's there's a lot of cool things you can do with render targets. So let me get set up for the other video and we'll go into that. Let's see, it's going to give an error every time I do it that way. Not a big deal. Alright. I will actually... I've already got this one already packaged up. So I can actually go into it and if anybody wants to jump in and test with me, that would be quite lovely. I've already got this one uploaded and ready to rock and roll. So this is the actual packaged version. Alright, so there, if you go into single player, you are not a host, so you don't have access to that menu. But you can see, it looks like, that's kind of freaky as hell. But yeah, you got the ability to go into the combat mode room, or combat arena, um, and leave and go back out to it. No matter which room you go to, this is the only room that's set up for combat mode, so room one will be combat and everything else just rooms um, but if you go into the game as the host then the host is a different color so you know that it worked right off the bat that's just temporary as soon as you actually teleport into room one you go into combat mode and then you go back into any other regular room and get out of combat mode your color goes back to to white it was just a temporary stopgap to let you know that it was working but now you have the ability to, to bring up this menu just want to make sure that the only the host is seeing that menu and from all my solo testing you know it seems to be working and yes I did put blocking volumes up here because I know that whenever certain people who test with me will immediately try to walk off the frickin' map. Alright, so that's that. I'm, I'm going to cover this completely in the, um, the next video, which I'll start up shortly, but I do need to take a quick break. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a few minutes.